Oh, we're back out at it again. More cars to move. I try and move that blue estate there. Look, yeah, focus right messed up. Yeah, that one there. So move that one out. But I need to move two anchor points. I need to use two anchor points. So I'm going to use the front of this one because that's attached to the other blue coupe, which is attached to the ground anchor at the back. So I needed another ground anchor because none of the space I've got around here is actually going to be good enough to get that one out. So I went down screw fix. <coughs> £12 for a pack of 10 D-shackles uh, and M14. 27 quid for a Smith & Lock 2 meter bug security chain, 10 mil hex link. Uh, only thing is with these ones, they've got the nice wide links you can get the pins in, but um, they're not welded. So you'd have to grab, I don't know, I used a TIG for this one, just run it around them. Uh, make sure you do it outside and don't breathe in the fumes because they are gold zinc coated. A um, couple of these one ton uh, lifting straps, lifting slings, these were on special, they are about 4 or 5 quid each. Um, I got another ratchet strap, because you can never have too few ratchet straps. This is an 8 meter, 50 mil, with, with the uh, closed links, the D-links on them. Let's get that out of the way. Obviously I've got this one I was using before as well and the two chain hoist set of gloves and some some stakes. Uh, these ones uh, are actually left to me by my dad. They weren't technically left to me, but they were left in the garage by my dad when he passed, so I'm using those. I've got some more. I use ten of these, ten of these ones, and I use the main stake at the front like I showed you before. You can get a pack of these in 12mm from Screwfix for about 45 quid. Yes, they're expensive, but if you've got things to move around, um, they're, they're good enough for the job. What I have been using is one of these uh, two-ton recovery strap things um, to go around the, the wheels and spokes to save any damage. But I thought I'd get some actual lifting slings for a change. Treat myself, because they were cheap. So the objective here is Grab the end of this. Get ourselves over here. Hey, right, Ralphie. We are going to send a chain somewhere about here, like that, in line with the back wheel of the car. Yep, that's good enough. And then we're going to use our chain hoists to pull that car across here. So we're going to stake this into the ground which I will get set up and show you guys the way to do that in a minute. One thing you will need is a lump hammer and probably a pair of gloves because it's still raining again today. So I'll pull back to you in a minute and, uh, and show you how to set up the stakes. So there you go, that's the basic setup. Let me see if I can get you a better shot over here. So you can see the orientation. So they're all V'd out to the side. And they're all laid back, pointing downwards in the direction of travel. Um, this centre one here is probably not even necessary. I like to put one in anyway, like I've done with the other setup on the other, other a ground anchor. So I'll get those all bedded in, send them all the way down, and then we've got ourselves a nice pulling point. Ideally, you want more 
to tension and straightness on this chain. So pull the links tight when you do this, which actually might set up and sort out a bit better in a second. But uh, that's your principle there. So I'll get that get that straightened up, get some more tension back in this, and then we'll come back and uh, put a strap around that rear wheel, get rid of that bit of rope, and we can pull that car away from there to move that 5 Series door out the back as well. <sighs> Alright, hard work begins. I'm not built for this, <laughs> but you can see they're getting them down. So, uh, like I say I'll finish these up and come back to you. All right, so I've uh, sent these as far down as they're willing to go. I think what I'm hitting is a lot of rubble and crap from underneath the extensions built here. It wouldn't surprise me at all because nobody here cleans up after themselves. So, what we're going to do is give that a go, should be fine, but we'll find out. Mostly. It genuinely wasn't planned at all. Not that well. Ourselves attached in. And we should be able to use the side of the frame as reference as how far we've moved so you guys can see it. But the idea is to get that car pretty much facing dead on to where this camera is now. So uh, we should have enough pull on this chain. And then, uh, yeah, while I'm here. You can see how it's taken up the slack in all of this. It hasn't moved up any yet, so I think we've got it bedded down enough that it'll do the job. So let's get pulling. Oh, she's coming. She's coming. Let's move it back a bit here. Oh, you can definitely see she's moving. Not quite enough yet, though. Well, might be.
Jesus. That's what you call a flat tyre. Properly flat. Still. Alright, so we're pretty much centre of the silver coupe. There's probably enough to be fair, but we'll give it another couple of tugs. Reckons that'll do us. Look at that. We move that. Three foot, probably more. Beautiful. So four flat tyres and dug into the ground, probably about two, three inches all the way around. So let's have a little look at our setup over here, shall we? Let's grab this camera. So as you can see, that first pin that stood up some. The second pin's taken some of the slack. Third pin set hasn't really moved much. Fourth, fifth, and sixth, they've done basically nothing. We have tension in this all the way back, so everything is doing something, but it's highly unlikely you're going to pull these out with what we're doing with it. Because so this is a technique I got from Scammell Tank Recovery Crews back in the 1930s, World War II. Uh, and they used chain a bit bigger, stakes a bit bigger, but not by as much as you'd think. I think they were using stakes around this sort of size, uh, all the way down through. So this is pinned at the very end, and then the fifth flat link in, fourth flat link, fourth flat link, fourth flat link. And we've got a couple of D-rings on the end, let's take the bigger chain, to take the, um, the bigger pin at the end, and to attach the ratchet strap and chain to. So there you go. She's moved quite a lot. As you can see, she's now way more in line with the back of the front of the silver one, which means I can take the towing eyelet off of that one, put a strap between the two cars there. I've got a strap going to the back of the blue coupe that we've seen yesterday or the other day. And then I can use those two as anchor points, go onto the tow bar of this one, which will be nice. Get onto the tow bar there. Um, probably use another one of those slings and then I can pull this one backwards and get her out of this mess and see what we got because there is all kinds of crap in those bushes oh yes there is all kinds of crap in them bushes so I need to clear out level out and then I can start getting some space to put the big marquee up if you have a look at my Instagram previously, you'll see, like I say, I had one before. There you go, you can see the blue coupe there. So that blue coupe is a donor vehicle, like I said the other day, for a mate of mine's estate. The twin car, the sister car to the uh, to the Moray Green estate there, the touring. I say he bought his from, I think it was Wales, and I bought mine from Salisbury on the same day for about the same sort of price. And then we met up and we had a little camera shoot there. So that 325 manual coupe back there is going to be taken apart and we're going to put the transmission and engine into his touring this is my 330 coupe which we're going to keep i'm going to sort out and have fun with um the shell from that 325 i might do something with i don't know as yet it's not bad condition it's just we don't need it for what it is this one here uh, is going to be sorted out and tidied up luckily enough i have a couple of crash tourings which i can use body parts for uh, to repair the rust damage, which I know there is some. There you go. 
This is actually how it came pretty much. This one was under the marquee for a number of years. Um, that's got a little bit worse. But again, we'll tidy that up and get that sorted out. We've got the donor panels for it. The arches and everything else here need to be sorted out. But once again, we'll use original panels for that, refurb them, recondition them, put them back in, have OEM parts on it. Uh, it's got most of the interior from a 528i, which I cut up, which is where this engine and gearbox is from, and this subframe from an E39. But yeah, oh, and the head over here. No, the head, I was going to use the engine. Um, but I believe the head, I well, know it's trash now, but it didn't, didn't matter. Um, he'd run it with uh, with no coolant for a little while. And somewhere in this head, I'll clean it up and find it one day. There's a crack, there's a crack in this head. So it's of no great use. But, all said and done, as much as it's been outside for a while, the block could still be usable. So we might well take the sleeves out of there Resleeve it, get it bored out, and maybe turn that into a. Uh, this is a 528 lump, so maybe turn it into a 330 uh, M52 B30 type nature. It might be a TU engine looking at the end of that. But, uh. Dual Vanos? I can't remember. Might be Dual Vanos. Oh, yeah, look, there's a Vanos controller. So, I believe this is a Dual Vanos. I'll say in that, might it be single. Nope, dual. One there, one there. So we've got dual Vanos on this. So it's, I believe it's a TU, M52 TU B28. So yeah, we'll have a little play with that, see what we can do at some point. We've got a couple of engines to sort out, which uh, another reason I need to get the marquee sorted out, so that we can get them up on the engine stands we've got and get them stripped apart and find out what's going on with them. So that's that one. That one is ready to be shifted back, which is lovely. So what I need to do now you start the pull on that one back so it's onto decent ground and then uh, I'll pull the ground anchor from behind here I'll pull the ground anchor here and then we'll set up actually I might leave the ground anchor in behind there, just pull this one don't need this one here anymore so I'll set up to do a pull from somewhere about here up to the back wheel of that green estate, that green touring and now we're going to pull that back end of that one around we might be able to go from the front wheel of that one to the driver's side or the right hand side front wheel of this one to get it to swing around. We need to get that car turned this way and then pulled back through the middle of these two. But that's uh, something I'll work on in a minute. As you can see we've had a bit of rain since I last did an update. That wasn't there before and this wasn't anywhere near as sloppy as it is. What good noise. So I've had to change the setup a little bit because I've got a couple of road pins that are over there, they're a bit thin, you can't even see them. Look at that, yuck. What this look, yuck. But yeah, oh, these two here, that's very thin there. That's getting a bit thin at the top. And I've noticed, look, it's getting very thin down here. So I'm going to retire these two for the moment. And uh, I've lifted them all out from where they were, which is running down there. And this is the setup we've got now, setup number two for the day. So, I've got my nice big big one here. I've got another big one here. It's a little bit off to the side, but it makes no difference. And then I've double staked all the, all the ones back. And that should do enough for this pull. That pull should pull this around. And uh, that chain hoist down there, and that strap and that other little lift sling I'm going to put from this wheel down to that wheel there so that I can pull it this way so that as it comes back this way and and uh, swings that front end in here oh Ralphie we're not going to hit this car I can pull this back up that way and get the whole thing to swing basically so that's the next pull we got for today but I'm gonna have a quick brew I know I've got good weather while we're here but can't work on an empty stomach no caffeine you've got to have your teas isn't you being a British lad you've got to have your cup of tea son so I'll um to be fair, actually I might just send a couple of those down while I'm out here and that then this one here should stay in line enough 
that when that wheel comes round and ends up about here, I've got a straight pull back and then I can uh, probably anchor off the wheel of that silver coupe over there for the other side and do a two-sided pull just to get the thing to come back straight, which will be nice. Ah, <sighs> right. Start bashing some more posts, I reckon. While I'm out there doing this, you can see now a bit easier how I was talking about it going in the flat rings. The ones that are flat to the ground, and this is why I use this chain and weld the links up because, like I say, the links are wide enough and long enough that you can get a decent sized stake in there and you can get two of them in line. So that one actually should be sitting back a bit further, like kicking back, but it'll be fine. But yeah, you can see now how I uh, run it flat down on the ground as best possible, no twists or anything. Stake the rear one, pull it taut, stake the front one, and then from the rear I come the fifth flat ring, the fourth, the fourth, the fourth, and then the, then the D shackle at the front there. And uh, yeah, that's a two meter chain. Like I say, it's one of those lock and sharp um, security chains from a screw fix of the places I'm sure are available. And this one was on special, it was down from 35 to about 26 quid today or yesterday. Actually, it was the day before I bought it, I welded it up yesterday. Did some other bits and bobs. So yeah, that is that is the setup. And as you've seen, it pulled that one nicely. We should have no problems in putting this one. With the ratchet strap doubled up here, we can uh, shorten that, get some more length on the chain hoist. The other one I could say over there, I could use in here as well. Give me a long, long pull if we're doing the one pull, but to maintain the, the vehicle's rotation as we need to, it needs to be turned in this way. Um, I'm gonna put it on the other side and hook it into that silver estate so that we can use that. Those train hoists, one ton capacity from the middle of Lidl uh, a couple of years ago. I haven't seen them since. I'm very glad I went back and bought a second one. They've been absolutely invaluable in this sort of thing. But other places you can get them as well. They're just not quite as cheap as they were from Lidl. I'm not saying they're the best, but they've certainly done the best job I knew for them. So there you go. That is 1930s technology. Dealing with 1990s cars and 2023's problems. Oh Christ, look at all this lot. Still, it's getting moved, it's getting done. My little secret one over there. The freebie from the lovely lady down the road. Nothing like the rest of these though. Alright, get some more of these sent down. Probably won't send them all the way down this time because I don't think I needed to. I think that was a bit excess last time. But, we'll do what we need to do. Well, winter being what it is. I had to take a 20 minute break from being out here to uh, let's see if I can get that back to normal zoom. There you go, that just increased the light on it, but it ain't as light out here. Uh, there are a couple of these pins. They were broken down here. They're not actually welded or anything, they just rolled over. They've been used so many times that this is actually fractured. I've had to take them inside and weld them. This one, and I believe it was this one. Yep, that one there. Um, so in the 20 minutes it took me to do that, not even that I'd imagine, I've lost most of my light. So what I'm going to do, this thing is it's still raining, I'm going to call it for tonight. First thing tomorrow we're going to come out and crack on with these. Get this pull done. Get that vehicle sorted out and round. But everything's now in place. Ground anchor, ratchet strap, chain hoist to the wheel. Lift sling, pull in sling thing, chain hoist to go to the opposite wheel, to go to that wheel there to get it to slew round. That'll be tomorrow. How did you get out here? I closed the door. 
Right, come on, fat boy. Can you go? Time to be in, my man. Get some food. Right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And we'll get that thing actually moved. <laughs>